Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good vibes, good energy, good people. It's your boy Mickey Fenty, aka Mickey Made It. If you're new to this channel, you know what to do to this channel. Subscribe right now. Also, if you want to support the brand, it's inspired by dreams dot shop and we got everything just dressing outside of the box stay original okay today's episode this comes from one of my chat tribe we was just going over on my morning show talking about different topics and the topic of divorce came up so i said you know they was explaining to me shouts out to abba they was explaining their divorce and the things they were going through at the time so i said you know what i'm gonna make this a whole conversation and we're gonna start breaking down just the different dynamics between divorces and as you can see i want to give a shout out to all the content creators out there just speaking the truth because in the industry the truth is being covered up right now because of situations going on like diddy and we're starting to see that all of that stuff they have that stuff and it's just altered before it gets to you it's all stepped on whereas us content creators we're giving it to you from the heart and we're giving it to you how we feel and more people connect to that so i'm gonna really appreciate you guys and we're gonna jump into this whole topic of divorce and is marriage even worth it? Let's get it. Mickey made it. Mickey made what you made, Mickey. Forget about the way it used to be. This is not a damn democracy. We are in a state of emergency, and my word is law. So I spent about a year and a half wondering if I should get a divorce. The hardest question you will ever have to ask yourself is, do I wanna work harder at this, or do I wanna walk away? Do you want to make it work? And if you do, does your partner also wanna make it work? And it takes a willingness from two people. For me personally, the yearn for freedom was stronger than my yearn to make it work. My ex-husband was such a great man, which is what tortured me with my decision. But all I know is I just felt this yearning to explore myself without him and I felt like where I was going in my life he wasn't able to go with me and this was a journey that I had to walk alone but that period when I was unsure of what to do or if I should leave was agonizing I was tortured I was unwell I was sick I was scared I was self-destructive I had one foot in one life and one foot in another life and I just was like walking back and forth trying to figure it out once you make a decision of what you're going to do you can finally move but until then you are just stuck so at some point you just have to decide but if you stay in something that you are not happy in, eventually you will self-destruct. I ended up cheating at the very end of my marriage because I did not want to disappoint him. I didn't know how to break his heart and I just butchered the job. My big regret is that I wish that I would have been more upfront with him about the things I was feeling and sharing my truth and that we would have gotten professional help earlier. At that time, I just didn't have the tools to navigate the situation that we were in. But I'll end this by saying, if you have a desire to go, you gotta go. That person that you're with deserves someone that wants to stay. And if you do want to stay and make it work, you deserve someone that wants to stay and make it work with you. I just got married and I'm getting divorced. The thing is that how dumb can they be to cheat on you, but yet not try to cover any of their traces? Which, I mean, I guess I'm thankful that I found out sooner than later, right? But let me break it down and tell you how I found out. Okay, so I have a garden and three garden beds. And I was out there pruning my tomatoes and my chiles and my garden beds are really close to my neighbor's uh, fence, like my next door neighbor's fence. Obviously, I'm not making a lot of sound because I'm just like pruning and I hear her come out and it sounds like if she's on the phone. So I'm like, ooh, I want to be a chismosa, you know, type of deal. So I hear her say like, yeah, but she shouldn't know because we will both get in a lot of trouble and it seems like if we both don't want to leave our partners and i'm like is a neighbor cheating on her husband obviously i stayed to listen so it it seemed like if the person on the phone was telling her like i'm gonna leave my partner or like i'm leaving because she was like no like if you leave that means that i have to like where are we gonna go this is just gonna be so awkward and the due to us living next to each other it's gonna be a bigger drama and i'm like wait what and then i'm thinking because next to her, their house it's like this older couple and i'm like like really a sugar daddy but i mean everybody has their own taste but 
I, I keep listening. And then I hear her say, but Noelle. And I'm like, Noelle? That's my husband's name. And it's not a common name. And another quick thing, in these times, a lot of people are marrying the wrong people for the wrong things. It's just crazy. Like for you to be like, oh, well, the neighbor's name is also Noel. So you might guess what I, I did next. So I go over and I bang on her door and she opens and she looks like she just seen a ghost. And I go off on her. I call her all these names and I ask her since when has it been going on and she's looking at me terrified and she's like no 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 you you're misunderstanding everything and I'm like like I heard you I was outside like you're for even going outside when you're the neighbor's husband and I try to grab her from her hair but my hands are not strong enough and long enough to hold her. And I'm trying to punch her, but I can't punch her. Like it's, I can't punch. And I feel so angry. And that's when I wake up and I'm like, I was heartbroken. I felt broken inside. Okay. It felt real. And now I'm really wondering if my husband's cheating on me with the neighbor. I learned a valuable lesson at a very early age. The most important trait you should look for when looking for a significant other is high character and integrity. So when I was like 22, 23, I had this coworker and he was married. And him and his wife, they was married for um, 10 years. They had two children. And then he went on a deployment. And when he was on a deployment, his wife had an affair with another guy. And she fell in love with him, apparently. So when he and, and how he found out is even crazy. It's crazy how he found out. So he found out because y'all know if you got if you got uh, Apple products, iPhone, laptops, whatever it is, you know how the cloud like everything is connected. So she had the phone, but she left her um, computer at home while she was on her deployment. So all the messages that her and the dude was doing, it would come back to her computer and her husband. He could see all of it. So he said, "Break his heart." He heartbroken, but he wasn't ready to leave her. Like in his mind, he still thought like. We gonna be able to work this out. So he talking to her while he deployed and he quickly realizing like, oh damn, like my wife, might, she might be gone. It sounds like she really in love with this dude. So he like, I guess it's over, but I'm not gonna make any moves. I'm gonna wait till this deployment over till I get back home and see where everything get. And whole time, like cheating, infidelity in the military, it's a very big deal. Like you could get kicked out, all that. But he decided not to tell on her because he's like, this is the mother of my children. Like, if I tell on her, she get kicked out of the military and I'll leave her. How's she going to take care of herself? How's she going to take care of the kids and all that stuff? So he decided not to, like, get her in trouble or anything. So fast forward, he gets back home. And guess what? She immediately files for a divorce. How divorces work, especially in Cal we was in California. This happened in California. Like, whoever, for, for whatever reason, whoever files for divorce for us, they kind of have, like, the upper hand. So she files for divorce. He doesn't fight it, so it was like a quick process. They get divorced. So they get divorced, right? And she takes all the money on his bank account. He loses custody of the children. And she takes all the furniture they have from their home together. And she takes it with her to the new house because she moved in with the guy. And so she take all the furniture from the crib and take it to the new crib. So all he had in the crib now was a couch. That's the only thing she left. She left him the, uh, the, the living room couch, but no TV. No furniture. It was like literally an empty ass house, just a living room couch. And it's so crazy. And I remember it so vividly because when he was describing describing the story to me, I could just see the pain like in his eyes. Like the first couple of nights, he was eating Snickers. Like that's what he had for dinner. He was eating like Snickers because that's all he, that's all he could afford. I forgot this part too. They had one vehicle, and she took that too. <laughs> I'm laughing, but. This, it ain't, ain't ain't nothing funny about this. Like this, is some serious stuff, and this happens to a lot of people all the time. But he eventually gets back on his feet. It take him like probably like almost two years. He gets back on his feet, and he's good now. Like everything good. He's remarried now, and everything. And the only reason I'm bringing this story up because I just talked to him, 
And it made me think like so many of us look for the wrong things when we come to look for a partner. Like we look for all vanity type of shit. It's all based on looks, how good somebody makes you feel, how nice their body is and all that type of shit. And not to say that's not important because at the end of the day, like you need to be attracted to your partner. So that is like very important. But at the same time, it's not the most important thing. The most important thing, at least in my opinion, is integrity high character and if somebody is god fearing because somebody with those traits there's a less likelihood that they'll betray you to that level before they do something that crazy they're gonna have second third fourth fifth thoughts about it and they won't do it just because it's against their own moral code it's against just the way they live it has nothing to do with you or anybody else they interested in it's just against them morally to do anything heinous like that and sometimes especially us men we get so p with and, and obsessed with somebody that we lose sight of everything. Like every red flag, every violation, we just look past it because we're like, damn, she's so bad. And I can't imagine my life without her. I can't imagine losing her. So we end up allowing so much just because we value the wrong things. This don't even just apply to men. This apply to everybody. Yeah, when y'all out here on a relationship hunt or whatever it is, make sure y'all putting value in the right things. Shit could get real ugly. And it could get ugly. It, 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 it could be good for a year, two years, five years, but it's only a matter of time for somebody to show their true character. And that could damage your entire existence where it could take years to recover from. You want to hear a really fucked up story? <laughs> so I'm in the process of getting divorced and it's not final yet, but the nail in the coffin was one year ago today after I confirmed that I was getting divorced which I had all these red flags popping up that I figured out my husband was a covert narcissist and he was lying and manipulating myself and my children. He says, we're definitely getting divorced, right? And I said, yes, we have to. And he said, well, I have something else to tell you. And when someone tells you this, it's like an automatic punch in the gut. You're like, crap, what's he going to unload? And it was exactly even worse than what you would think. He told me that the Thanksgiving after my dad died in 2009, when we were all at my mom's house to support her so she wouldn't be alone, that my mom tried to have sex with him. So I, how do you take that, right? That's some messed up information. He said he didn't tell me about it because he thought I would divorce him, but nothing happened. Now, I kept saying to him, if nothing happened, why would you think I would divorce you? And he didn't have an answer for it. Because I wouldn't divorce him if nothing happened. So something obviously happened. Confronted my mother. She told me the opposite. She said that he, they were really drunk. He was making her drinks. They were drinking Captain and Cokes, whatever. My kids were asleep upstairs. I just started a job working night shift. So I wasn't even, I went to work. Had Thanksgiving dinner, went to work. These two are, are yucking it up, drinking. He goes into her bedroom and tells her now that my dad is gone, my father, he's going to take care of her. And he went in and took off her nightgown and she didn't stop him. The thing that uh, she also said is that they didn't have sex. We didn't have sex because he was so drunk that his equipment wasn't functioning. But if it was, they would have definitely had sex. And they definitely did things together. I know it because he demonstrated it for me. He demonstrated what my mom did or tried to do with him. Yeah, that's how fucked up he is and twisted in the head. Later, after rehashing and thinking about this, I figured out that he planned this. He wanted power over my mother. He wanted to isolate me from my mother. And that's why he told me because what he thought was going to happen, that I would believe him and then not talk to my mother and not get divorced. He then proceeded to tell my children that uh, he was sexually assaulted by my mom. A Marine Corps combat veteran, 39 years old at the time, was assaulted by a grandmother. Think about that. And he proceeded, he, he almost convinced my kids that my mom went after him and they believed him for a while now they don't because he's a piece of trash so i don't so his goal was to isolate me from my mom 
ruined the relationship with my mom and my kids so they don't have a grandmother now I don't have my mother as support and I was going to come running back to him and I almost did it takes seven to ten times to leave an abusive relationship and he almost reeled me back in but he didn't thank goodness I get asked a lot um what was one of your biggest like failures in your own divorce that you wish other people would know <laughs> and it's very easy I spent months and I mean months worrying about saying the words I want a divorce I worried how he was going to take it I worried how he was going to feel I was worried about his reaction his immediate reaction only um and I worked so hard at having the courage to say, I want a divorce. We need to separate. I spent so much time and energy on that. What I did not spend a lot of time and energy on was preparing myself for what was going to happen the next day and the next day and the next day. I did not think past that moment. I said those words without being prepared. I said those words without being educated. I said those words without having a fucking plan B through Z. I only thought about just saying the words and that's it. 17 and a half years married, four kids. I begged this man, begged this man, please can, I've never been out of the US. Can we please go out of the US? Can, I want to experience something new. Uh, can we travel? Can we do something? No, no. I get a text from him. Five minutes ago what does it say hey i need your permission it's in the planning but me and Aaron, his fiance are taking her kids and why he wants to take Kylie to mexico for spring break and i said um i think it's my permission to do that they said absolutely it's a great experience for her just please watch her um help on a piece it's really really hard for me because it's like 17 and a half years so four kids and i begged you i begged you to take us or to take me and to do those kind of trips and, and to spend that kind of time with us and it was always no and now you're giving this woman everything that i begged you for everything that i begged you for you were giving to her people do that because they want to feel hurt they want to know that they're validated for feeling the way that they're feeling that it's not right and it isn't okay and it confirms my choice to divorce was right even though i'm the one that was shamed and i'm the one that lost friends of 15 years because they didn't want to be associated with me anymore because i walked away okay so i found this beautiful spot that's over with you like i have a rock to sit on and yeah. So one thing that I love about solitude is you get to think. And so going on this trail, as I'm running through it, taking pictures, my mind's running and something comes across my mind here. So I want to record it, I want to make sure that I remember it. And that is, after my divorce, I felt really alone. And I didn't really know who I was. Um, so I had a partner define me for so long. Well, at least I felt like it. And I didn't, I just didn't know who I was. I didn't know what I wanted. I didn't know where I wanted to go. I just had a lot of things that I needed to figure out. And, and so as I'm walking through this trail by myself and the quiet and stillness, I realized I'm happy. I'm really, really happy. And I'm happy alone. I'm happy by myself. Not to say that that doesn't mean that one day I don't want to be with somebody. I just felt like you can be happy on your own. You can't really be happy with somebody else until you're happy being alone. You can't count on somebody else to fulfill your life. You can't count on somebody else to tell you who you are. You have to be who you are. You just have to do it. It's hard and it sucks. And there's days that you cry and there's times that you wonder why things are happening the way that they're happening. I think you have moments like this that bring clarity and you're just in awe of the wisdom that you've learned about yourself, the power that that can bring you, knowing that you're okay alone and you don't need somebody else to bring you happiness. When somebody comes into your life, they should magnify that happiness. They shouldn't be responsible for it. Um, I'm just so grateful today. Um, everybody's, you know, quarantine. I'm so sick of it. I'm so sick of it. Embrace it. Learn from it. Learn from the stillness. Take the opportunity to really look at your life, look at yourself, and tell yourself, am I happy? Am I doing what I need to make me happy? You know, am I helping others around me be happy? Um, 
gosh, it's a beautiful day, you guys. Don't waste too long. When I first got divorced, it was the hardest part of my life. I didn't have anything. I didn't have no car. I had to start over. I literally had to sell my car. I, me and my kids got on a flight with four suitcases and my dog and I had to start over. I ended up having to move back with my parents. Me and my kids were sleeping in a queen size bed. All four of us, I was ashamed. I had to get on food stamps and I literally had to start over. I was embarrassed. I was like, Lord, what am I gonna do? I'm out here in this world, I got three kids. What do I do? I don't know, I don't even know where to begin. And I look at my life now, even though I'm not where I wanna be yet, I'm grateful for the experience and I'm grateful for where he has brought me from, y'all. Do you understand me? I almost lost my mind. I'm telling y'all, I know what you're going through. I almost lost my mind. It was times that I contemplated suicide and everything. And I, God has done so much in my life. And I just wanna encourage y'all, like you're gonna make it through it. He brought me through it. Love y'all. I left my home, my life, my multi-million dollar everything with three suitcases. With the girls or without the girls? Without the girls. So I have a full-time nanny who was there seven to seven. So I was like, okay, well, I'm going to come to LA and I'm going to see my therapist because my therapist is here and I'm just going to check into the hotel. Well, when I got to the hotel, I slept for so long, they did a wellness check and they knocked on the door to make sure I was okay because I hadn't ordered any food and no one had seen me. And I could barely talk when they did the wellness check because I hadn't had water in so long. You were just out because you were so exhausted? I was out. I was physically exhausted and sick. How many hours is this? Um, I would say it was probably, I want to say 30 hours. After I got up, I remember just being in a stupor and feeling like I could only mentally take one thing in front of me. So it was like, okay, drink water. Okay, eat some food lay back down. And then finally, I actually just told my sister, I said, can you please check in on the kids? Cause I don't know if I, I'll be able to, you know, I mean, it was just really step-by-step. Step. And I think that's very similar for a lot of women. Here's some things that my soon to be ex-husband used to do that I didn't realize wasn't normal until after I left. When the Wi-Fi guy came to install our internet, he made me FaceTime him the entire time because he said that I might try and sleep with him. And then he still accused me of sleeping with him saying that I could have slept with him before I called him or after I hung up the phone. Didn't tell me happy birthday until right before I fell asleep on my birthday, two months after we got married. Gaslit and manipulated me into not having a job and said, I just want you to be a stay at home wife. And then when like money problems would come up or any kind of issue with me would come up, he would complain about how I didn't have a job and how I'm just mooching off of him. Only came home and ate dinner with me maybe twice a week because he was at his parents or his brother's house. He did not get me a Christmas present, but instead he gave me his debit card and said, don't know what you want, you got 50 bucks, go get yourself something nice. Complained and told me that I was folding his clothes wrong when he never ever did laundry, wash clothes, nothing. He told me over a year after we'd been married and I was pregnant that he wanted multiple wives and then he was upset that I was upset about it. Got pissed when my parents bought us groceries one time. Told me that he didn't believe that our son was his son and when I said get a paternity test, he said, I don't even want to because it could be so close to my brother's DNA that you probably slept with that it would just say that it was mine and I would still never know. When the electricity went out on two of our rooms, including a bathroom and our washing machine was broken and I tried to get him to fix it for about nine months, he told me that I should have been more grateful and that it was a test to me because people back in the olden days didn't have that kind of stuff, so I should have just been grateful that I had it in the first place, even if it was broken. But I really just had to pull the fuck. I'm at work on the fucking mic truck. Why the fuck I had divorce court today and my wife is telling me the whole time that, oh, you don't gotta go to court, I'm gonna make sure everything good, I'm not gonna get you for nothing. I just need to bring my sister for, what she say, for a witness or something? Bro, Monkey just called me talking about Bruh, they just granted this bitch half of every thing my savings account I'm thinking she like see your social security number she talking about cuz they Making me put you on child support, which I'm like you can just take me off. It's cool But brother put me on child support can alimony Took half of my savings account Bro took my, my the safe that I kept at her house Basically, so I had to give her the combination to this court in order. Bro, this bitch just took me up top, bro. Okay, there's a lot that could be said when it comes down to divorce, when it comes down to marriage. And I'm not a marriage counselor, but what I can see and what, from what I'm hearing is, it's all about perspective. Because 
you know, yes, you wanted something to work. You wanted this marriage to work, but it came to the point where it's a divorce. And you'll be so surprised how a lot of people feel like they're left like hostage in these marriages that they fell out of love with their partner. So you have to make that choice. Yes, it's going to be hard to get out of it. And it's going to be easy to get into it. But on that way of going out, you have to also remember why you are getting out. Because you want to find the real thing. But you have, your marriage is not working. And a lot of people are held hostage to the fact that they have kids with a person. Or they can have, you know, just um, property or businesses. And these are the type of the problems that makes the whole divorce thing really, really messy. So you guys let me know down below. And yeah, there are people going through um, some really messy divorces right now. But it's not to say that love you know can't happen again and they can't get the spark with the right person so you guys let me know leave your comments down below till next time it's your boy mickey fenty aka mickey made it if you're new to this channel you know what to do to this channel subscribe